welcome to another episode of Daily Hope. Today we are in Acts chapter 1 and 2 because yesterday Acts chapter 1 um, didn't go out clearly. But so today we're going to be doing both of them, but it's going to be really great. I'm really excited to jump into Acts. Acts was written by Luke and the same Luke that wrote the Gospel of Luke. And so he wrote this as well. And it, at some points, these were even this was even just one book. Um, because it, it it shows the gospel of Jesus, but it goes right into the the what Jesus had imparted into his disciples. A couple of things that I want us to focus, that I would like us to focus on in the book of Acts is 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 um a couple of things. One, their unfailing dependency on the Holy Spirit. At every point in this book, you will see a dependency on the Holy Spirit. And what we're, we're, what we're seeing in the book of Acts is the birth of the new church, the birth of the church that has built on Jesus as a foundation, and it runs under the direction of the Holy Spirit. Amen? So it's, it's going to be really cool. Um, we're going to see some amazing things, but um, but first off, I want to make sure that we're, 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 we pay attention, that the disciples, the apostles, are completely dependent on the Holy Spirit. And the second thing is, it has to do with um, the series that Pastor Drew has been on is Speak Up. You're going to see how often they speak up about their faith and how bold they are in confessing that Jesus is Lord. Amen. So it's really cool. It's really great. I'm really excited to jump into it. So before we get started, please make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that this time that we spend in the book of Acts, it will be spirit-inspired, spirit-breathed, God. I thank you that we will be reliant on the Holy Spirit as we, uh, as we read and we listen what you have for us this day. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. So, we're going to read a little bit of Acts 1, and then we're going to jump into Acts 2, okay? So, Acts chapter 1, verse 1, um, The former account I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach, verse 2, until, until, the, until the day in which he was taken up after through the Holy Spirit had given um, commandments to the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom he, had, he also presented himself alive, after his um, suffering by many infallible proofs, by many infallible proofs. This is interesting because people reading this will actually know during this, during this time, there's people that are still alive that knew Jesus. I'm going to say it again. During this time, there's people that were still alive that knew Jesus and they saw Jesus. So if anyone was like, oh yeah, Jesus never existed. It's like, no, like go talk to Tommy over there. Tommy was one of the 5,000 that was fed. <laughs> Does that make sense? Um, also, in this portion, Luke is given a, a general overview, a summary of, of things that will take place in, uh, of things that he's going to talk about. So, to whom he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs, being seen by them during 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which, he said, you have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit, not many days from now. And we're going we're gonna to read a couple more verses, but that's where we're going to take, we're going to take that right to chapter, uh, chapter 2. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? This is funny because there's still a part of them that believe that the kingdom's still physical. They're like, okay, Jesus, you know, this is, I'll give you an example. This is similar when Jesus first comes to Jerusalem as he's approaching really his death. Remember when he comes in, they put him on, on, on a young donkey and, and, the palm, and the palm leaves are falling on, on like in the road and people are putting their clothes and, and they're saying, Hosanna, 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 right? And they're almost welcoming him as, as a king. And so what's happening is that they're, they're expecting him to restore the kingdom to Israel. In other words, they're like, they want, they're, in other words, they're saying this, um, no longer will the Romans be the one who will rule us. Now we're going to be on top. You know, this is a son of David, and, and when David 
um, when David ran the kingdom, things were prosperous, things were well. No one wanted to, no one wanted to challenge or no one wanted to come against Israel. Why? Because David was in charge. And now this is Jesus, and Jesus is the son of David, and now Jesus is going to put us in charge, and we are once again going to rule, and no one's going to mess with us, especially those Romans. So right, so right here, the, they're still a part of that where they're saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And it's so funny because, like, Jesus is about to go to heaven. He's already shown them so much. And then they're getting back to this, you know, Jesus, are, 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 are we going to be, are we going to have the power over the Romans now? Are we going to have the power over, you know, Pilate and all these people and the governors and rulers and, but I love Jesus' response here, his response. And he said to them, it is not for you to know the times or seasons which the father has put in his own authority. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. It's so funny because Jesus, Jesus answers their question with yes, but it's not a physical yes, it's a spiritual yes. And let me show you what I mean by that. They said, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel, to restore the kingdom to us? In other words, are we going to have this political and physical power where we can tell people what to do? And Jesus is saying, no, I'm going to give you spiritual authority and spiritual power, which is better. And he says it, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem. So he's saying, listen, I'm, I, I'm going to impart power to you guys, but it's not power in the way that you think. It's not power where you're going to lord over people and you're going to command people. No, no. It's going to be this power that is rooted in love. It's going to be this power that's rooted in the spirit. And that, and that, that. Because you can tell someone, you can tell someone that something is wrong or tell someone not to do anything. But the power that I'm going to give you, you're going to be able to speak to their heart and change their heart and introduce them to God. And it's so much better. Does that make sense? So they're like, Jesus, we want this political power, this worldly power, and God, and Jesus is like, ah, I'm going to give you something better. I'm going to give you a power that comes from above. I'm going to give you the promise of the Father. I'm going to give you the helper. I'm going to be with you. Isn't that amazing? And then in Acts chapter 2, it starts with this. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all in one accord and in one place. That's really good. They were all in one accord and in one place. That's very important. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Amen. And, and there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And when this sound occurred, the multitude came together and were confused because everyone heard them speak in his own language. So here we, we, we see the filling, the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And it's amazing. And what I want to say is that this is the start of their dependency on the Holy Spirit. They have received the Holy Spirit. And so now in the coming chapters, we're going to see them being led by what they have been filled by. That's good. They're going to be led by what, they're, by what they are filled by. Does that make sense? And that is true for anything. Anything that we watch, anything that we listen to, anything that we consume, anything, you know, you've heard the phrase, you are what you eat, right? That goes the same with, with, with what you listen to and what you watch. If you're watching things, I don't, I don't even want to get into examples, but if you're, but it, well, one example is if you're watching something that constantly has rebellion and, you know, there's a bunch of like these Disney movies where, you know, they're, you know, the, 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 the children go against the parents and then trauma happens, but they always live happily ever after. And they would not, and they would never have lived happily ever after if they hadn't disobeyed their parents first. This is a common narrative. You guys, I mean, I'm not. Listen, I'm not crazy. You guys know this. Maybe some of you better than I do because I don't watch Disney. Um, but is that not a common narrative where someone goes against an authority 
and then bad things happen to them, but in the end, it's all okay and it's all for love and and they live happily ever after because they rebelled in the first place, right? So what you're being filled by, what you, you're going to be led by, and soon enough, you might be you might be thinking, hmm, I'm uh, you might be thinking I'm going to do the wrong thing for the right reasons, and that's okay. I'm going to do the wrong thing for the right reasons, and that's going to be okay. Now, that might not be a perfect example, but you, you understand what I'm saying. What, what, whatever, we're, whatever we're being filled by, we will be led by. So when we're filled with worldly things, when we're, when we're filled with worldly, what Jesus says, you know, the cares of the world. When we're filled with the cares of the world, we will be led we will be led by the cares of the world. And what that means is that's going to come out is we're going to be led by fear. But when we're filled with the Spirit, the Spirit of adoption, the Holy Spirit that is our helper, when we're filled with His Spirit, we will be led by His Spirit. And we will be led in confidence and in faith and in trust that Jesus is in us and wants to work through us. Amen? Amen. So that is, that is the message for today. Whatever we are being filled by, we will be led by amen. And so, listen, God is going after our schedules. He's going after our time. He's going after our media. You know why he's going after all of those things? Because those things have your heart. And Jesus is going after your heart. Amen. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, that we would examine our own lives and say, Lord, what am I filling myself with that is actually causing me to walk in that? And to be led by it. Lord, we confess and we declare today that we don't want to be led by anything but your Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen and amen. If you haven't already, please make sure you like this video and you subscribe to our channel. Also, at the end of the video, there will be a giving link. If you want to become a monthly supporter, even if it's like $5 a month, that that goes such a long way. So thank you for all of you guys who support Daily Hope. Also, if you want to follow along with us, there is a link in our description box uh, for our reading plan. And tomorrow we will be, tomorrow, tomorrow is Sunday. So so, tomorrow, Acts chapter 3, you will be reading on your own. We will not be having Daily Hope tomorrow. Why? Because church, church is essential, okay? Go to your church, serve in your church, um, support your pastor, and be fed in your church and, and, and go and go enjoy your Sunday with your church family. And if you're looking for a church, we would love to be your church. Our, the link to our church is in our description box. And we would love, love to have you guys. But we don't do Daily Hope on Sunday because you belong at your church. Amen? Amen. Before I let you go today, I want to remind you that people are our heart. Generosity is our opportunity. Excellence is our spirit. Smiling is our favorite. And Jesus is our Lord, we'll catch you guys on Monday for Acts chapter 4.